that's, that's one kind of preaching. Bless you, Bishop Hunt. Good to see you, man. Amen. That's one kind of preaching. And then there is the other kind. The kind that's reflected in the Bible. Where you deal with the prevailing issues of our times. Not one prophet in the Bible ever ignored the prevailing issues of his time. And yet most preachers today are trained. They learn. They cut their teeth ignoring the prevailing issues of our time, of their times. So as not to offend anybody, so as to not have to take a stand on anything that may be controversial. Our guest speaker is not one of them. Amen. Amen. I'm glad of that. He's a culture warrior. And he fights for one of the institutions that made uh, Western society possible and great and that's the family Amen. we know how God feels about the family all you have to do is open the, the Bible and the first thing that the Lord establishes after he re s brings order to chaos the creation was in chaos God brought order to chaos. Those first five days aren't days when the Lord started over, days where God restored order. He didn't make the dry land on those days. He said, let it appear. He separated the waters from the land. He caused the green grass to appear, restoring everything back to the way it was when he initially made it. Then God created man in his own image and when you read both uh, occurrences of the creation um, you, you see that he made male and female and then you see that he made Adam as we zoom in made him first and then made a wife a woman for him Moses commented on what God did and gave us God's first institution the institution of marriage he said for this cause shall a man Leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. One flesh. One of the challenges we have in society today is that people are putting off marriage. Yep. This is one of the reasons why you should pray and ask God to lead you even when you vote. Because when certain things happen, it changes other things. When America went in the direction and followed the lead of some that said same-sex marriage is the direction our country should go in. In every country where same-sex marriage has become the law of the land, the effect that it has had on marriage is that fewer people get married. It's not that more homosexuals marry because they're not really interested in that. They'll tell you we, we hate that institution because it's rooted in Christianity. Marriage is an institution that's rooted in the Judeo-Christian concept. So they hate that institution. They ain't looking for no monogamy. They want free love. If you can't be with the one you love with them, just be love the one you're with. Just do whatever you want to do. Then God from there instituted the family. We see Adam, he knew Eve, and she brought forth. So forth and so on. God has raised this man of God up to fight for, to shed light on, not to redefine, but to fight those who are trying to redefine. He points with his finger, this is, this is what the Lord have said. And I love the days, I think the good old days, whenever, when they failed. And then when they realized they had failed, they got married. Them the good old days. Now they go to the abortion clinic. 
Amen. Amen. Now the anti-lifers, they, 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 there's something else. See, they all, uh, they all uh, have the same point of organ. You may think they're different. You may think that the, you know, that sometimes we hear that the, the, the uh, transgenders and the LGBTQ they're divided because one say I was born like this, the other one said change me. They're not divided. They all have the same organ, Satan. They operate by the principle of anti-life. They know they can't produce a child. That's anti-life. They know that whenever they hack, whack up that baby's uh, genitals, that puts an end to that legacy. Anti-life. See, Satan is the energy that we're dealing with and and, and, and we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll swallow a strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Some of you that are listening to me right now, you're wrestling with the spirit of anti-life. You're arguing with me. You're arguing with what the Bible said. Some of you all are sitting in judgment of how I preach. You're dealing with anti-life. Trying to keep you framed because you got a frame about preaching. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. You think this is the way it's supposed to be. Some of you wouldn't have stayed with Jesus. He was too long. <laughs> you don't feed us every day. <laughs> Amen. The enemy will frame you so that you will not be fed. But all of them have the same motivation. That is a guilt that cannot be eradicated. See, Jesus is the only way. He alone can forgive sin. And so all of these anti-lifers, they want to get rid of difference. See, because, uh, see, goodness and righteousness is always known through comparison. Comparison. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I wouldn't even have known uh, sin had not the law came. But when the law came, right. I had a comparison. Right. And then I knew I was sinning. Right. So in the world of the anti-lifers, they want to get rid of everything that's not like them. So they have an insatiable desire Shut down the church. Shut the mouth of Bishop Wooden. Jail Superintendent Quick. Y'all don't hear me. Bankrupt them. Put them in fear. Why? Because we want to go out and we want to be celebrated. We want to wave our flag. We want to do a dance and uh, we want to make mockery of the Last Supper. You don't hear me talking, do you? Why? Because if everybody will accept it, it will ease our conscience. But no, it won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. I'm here to tell you there's only one remedy for their guilt. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. 